Hello everyone and welcome to the week 3 edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Borg. We start in Toronto and a play that is probably going to come under heavy scrutiny from the disciplinary committee. While the players are setting up for a set piece early in the second half, you see Toronto FC's Jackson deliver an elbow right into the chest of DC's Davey Arnaud. Referee Silvio Petrescu is looking right at the incident, sees it the whole way, but he opts for only a yellow card. I would have hit Jackson with a red. And after getting off scot free for his kick on Clint Dempsey in week two, the Brazilian winger is really pushing his luck. Staying in Canada, and we head to the big O in Montreal. One play to look at here. It's the 64th minute, and Felipe is making a run into the Sounders box, and Jimmy Traore gives him a nudge with a left arm to the back. It looks like the impact takes place right on the line of the penalty area, which would have resulted in a PK, but referee Armando Villarreal doesn't blow his whistle. Perhaps a no-call based on reputation? I think this one was legit. Another disputed PK in Kansas City, and this one also was not called. This one takes place in the 31st minute, and Sal Zizo is chopped down in the box by San Jose's Clarence Goodson. The defender clearly gets some of the ball, but he also takes down the player in the process. That's definitely a penalty to me, and Zizo can't believe it's not called. Referee Ricardo Salazar looks the other way. The earthquakes were also graced later in the match in the 56th minute. Steven Lenhart commits a handball in the box, and it's a penalty that Salazar calls. But a handball that prevents an opponent from gaining possession is a cautionable offense. Now, the card is up to the discretion of the referee, but I would have issued a yellow, and in that case, that would have been Lenhart's second. To Colorado, where there were no doubts about the two penalty kicks awarded to the Rapids. First, there was the kamikaze kick by Timbers goalkeeper Donovan Ricketts, who misses the ball and stops the Sean Brown's path to goal. And then just six minutes later, Vicente Sanchez beats backup keeper Andrew Weber to the ball. This wasn't a denial of a goal scoring opportunity, so yellow was the right card. Both were good calls by referee Mark Geiger, who also got it right on the sending off of Jose Mari for a second bookable offense. Sure, he's in the vicinity of the ball when he goes up for this header, but when we see it in real time, you see that the Spaniard is recklessly charging at full speed right into Portland's Will Johnson. That's a yellow card. Wrapping things up from Dick Sporting Goods Park. There was a 30th minute offside call on Gaston Fernandez that was incorrectly flagged, in my opinion, by assistant referee Sean Hurd. To Toyota Stadium in Frisco, where Dallas midfielder Andrew Jacobson is on the wrong end of this second half challenge by Chivas USA rookie Thomas McNamara. No card is issued by referee Fotis Bazakos, and I think he's right. To me, it's merely an unfortunate play because McNamara is playing the ball all the way and actually kicks it. As part of his natural motion, he winds up stepping on Jacobson's ankle. Jacobson was stretchered off. We wish him all the best. Chivas USA midfielder Adolfo Bojo Bautista was lucky not to end up stretchered off himself after the studs up tackle by Dallas's Henry Thomas, which deserved the straight red it got in second half stoppage time. Folks, this is the definition of endangering the safety of your opponent. I mean, both of Bobo's ankles could have easily been broken in this tackle. Henry Thomas played a critical role in the first Dallas goal earlier in the night, and there was a hint that perhaps he may have been offside but we can't say definitively. It's a tough call, and assistant Brian Poschel does well to give the benefit of the doubt to the attacker. Next to Chicago and Toyota Park for Fire versus Red Bulls, and we'll look at two incidents under our microscope. First, in the 50th minute, it appears to me that New York center back Ibrahim Sakagya just slams into fire forward Quincy Ameriqua. That looked like a foul, and therefore a penalty kick to me. Referee Drew Fisher doesn't call it. Fast forward to the 70th minute, and Hamison Olave takes down Juan Luis Anangono. And I felt that this was worthy of a yellow card for its recklessness. Olave is way late, and the ball's on the other side of Anangono. That would have been Olave's second yellow. He gets away with a talking to from Fisher. And we wrap it up in Salt Lake, where the Galaxy are up in arms about two injuries to their players. First, in the 30th minute, James Riley has to leave the game after running past this net grab avoid tackle. I see nothing wrong with the challenge, and in fact, referee Ismael Elfa doesn't even whistle a foul. It looks like Riley injures himself as he's evading the grab avoid lunge. Then, in the 63rd minute, RSL's Alvaro Saborio comes in with a challenge that's slightly late on AJ De La Garza, but he packs a lot of force. Saba was coming into it full bore, and it's the high leg and the studs that catch De La Garza around his left ankle. Sabo gets a yellow for reckless play, but I think this qualifies as serious foul play in that he uses excessive force, borderline brutality. It also endangers the safety of his opponent. We'll see if the disciplinary committee agrees. Compare that to a play that occurred in the Dallas Chivas match involving Christopher Turpak ramming into Kellen Acosta. 
He also gets a yellow card, but I don't think it rises to the serious foul play level because he makes sure it's a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder charge. The fact that the legs are not involved is a very important distinction according to the laws of the game. But back to Salt Lake, and Saborio was at the center of a potential penalty kick in the 48th minute. Galaxy defender Dan Gargan has two hands on him in the box as the cross comes in. Saborio doesn't hit the ground, but that does not mean it's still not a foul. And lastly, RSL's Javier Morales should have been set off, in my opinion, for what happened in the 55th minute. Check out this two-footed studs-up lunge on Landon Donovan. Morales got a yellow from Elfath, but to me, that's worthy of a straight red. I used the same measure last week with the two-footed lunge by Felipe on Corey Ash that only got him a yellow. We close with a scene from Toronto, where Michael Bradley barrels over referee Silvio Pavescu, who promptly pops right back up and calls the foul committed on Bradley. How's that for a welcome back, Silvio? And welcome back to all the regular referees. That's all we have for this week. For our editor, John Benton, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.